market. Let's turn our attention to the bond market. The bond market has taken Wall Street for a ride this year. Last month's yield curve inversion sparking worries that a global growth slowdown could hit the United States. Let's get more. This guy knows everything about this subject. Jerome Schneider, he manages $300 billion in bond assets at PIMCO, and he runs the world's largest actively managed bond ETF. Jerome, the bond market's been smacking the stock market around. What do lower yields mean? Are they here to stay? This is a long-term phenomenon. I mean, down where we are right now. Well, typical what we've been saying at PIMCO for quite some time is that we are more close to a new neutral rate cycle, meaning growth rates have been coming down for quite some time. Expect growth to be between the 2 and the 3% range, which means rate, rates right now are going to be sort of range-bound. And that's what we've seen basically the Fed and policy sort of articulate over the past few quarters is simply that we have approached that neutral rate. Again, hard to exactly pinpoint but we know we're in the general vicinity. So as a result, we know that rates really aren't going to move that much higher. Potentially, they move lower if recessionary fears become, uh, become actually enacted. But reality is, is that these rates we see right here, absent you know, anything else within tail risks, um, actually are probably in the range where we're going to see for the next year or so. Now, you're, we're talking about bonds, and I want to hear more about it, but you're a, a manager, and you're, a, you're an active manager. You run the biggest actively managed bond fund in the world. You've been making a very interesting point. We've been noting for a long time, Rick and I have been going for years about this, equity, active fund managers underperform their benchmarks regularly. And you're insisting that the bond market is different than the stock market, that actively traded bond fund managers can generate alpha and outperform. Explain why. Quite simply, bonds are different. When you think about benchmarking, aqueduct, aqua, active equity uh, market makers and, and portfolio managers have a more of a challenge ahead of them. In fact, only about 25% of them um, in, end up overachieving their benchmark rates. But on the bond side, it's actually much different. 80% or more on average actually outperform the benchmarks, which means if you can look at a portfolio, understand the portfolio risks, find and highlight those risk attributes you like, not just interest rate, but create a diversified portfolio that includes credit risk, mortgage-backed opportunities, asset-backed securities, high-quality assets. You're able to generate additional income, but also steer clear of some of the hazards that the, that the benchmarks actually but, but pertain. But what's the secret sauce? You're saying that the bond market has, what, more inefficiencies that are, you are able to exploit to generate alpha? I'm not getting where, why is it different? Than more in the equity market. More inefficiency is the ability to uh, accentuate those risks that actually are cyclically more beneficial. It all comes down to risk adjusted returns, Bob. So, for example, in a cycle where you think you're late in the cycle, you might want to be under accentuating corporate bonds, corporate credit, and at the same time find other high quality sources of income, such as mortgages. That's exactly what we've been doing at PIMCO for the past year or so, well ahead of what we saw in the fourth quarter of last year. And given that it's late in the cycle, we want to continue to identify opportunities but be defensive. When you're in an index fund, although index funds garner a good amount of attention, especially in the fixed income universe, there actually isn't that much opportunity to deviate. You have to have a, so much interest rate exposure, you have to have so much credit exposure, and that takes the good with the bad. You Rick, can't, you can't do you, do you buy this, that, that no, fixed not, income is, is a different animal? I mean, it, there is, there is the, you different. can drive a truck through some yeah. of the bids and asks on this. We know over-the-counter bond market, much wider spreads, There's and that, no uh, potentially that makes some sense. There's no question that it's different, but I'm not convinced that the differences equate into the ability to capture it. Yes, I think you're right that you could have a higher percentage of bond fund managers beating the index relative to stock fund managers beating their index, but the ones that are beating the index don't do it on a consistent basis. If you look at this year's winners in the bond market and look at how they do next year and how those winners do the year after that and the year after that, it's very little consistency. And so I'm not convinced on an after-tax, after-fee basis that you're necessarily going to be attaining what you're trying to see. So one, one of the keys is having a framework. At PIMCO, we have a long-term framework focusing on macroeconomics, focusing on different risk attributes in our quarterly strategy sessions, which we, which we identify and hold to, and then continue to accentuate and under-accentuate as the economic cycle continues. So that's pretty much the secret. It's what we've been doing for almost five decades at PIMCO and creating those long-term track records for investors. So sure, it's about income, and that's one thing fixed income investors obviously want, but it's also about capital appreciation. And the combination of the two is a total return story. Income plus capital appreciation and total return. And What's that's, the turnover rate typically? Well, it depends upon the strategy. For some of our short-term strategies, like the short-term bond fund ETF Mint, 
again, focused on cash preservation, cash capital, that's pretty high because of shorter dated securities. If you're focusing on one of some of our longer dated ETFs, like our low duration strategy, Elder or Bond, those are a little bit longer, durations are longer, so they ended up being a, just a fraction of the portfolio. Holding and turnover could be 50, 60, 70% of the portfolio as opposed to multiple times during the course and of a year. And that means there's going to be a more, uh, a higher tax liability for taxable accounts. Potentially, but at the same time, what you're also doing is capturing market inefficiencies. And this is what, Bob, what goes to Bob's point is, is that as active managers, we're not simply trading to trade. You're trading to produce capital appreciation. So you're hoping to buy cheap bonds, selling them when the appreciation happens on the, rip, on the rich side. So, example, when you found the distress in the marketplace in the fourth quarter of last year when there was pretty good opportunities in corporate credit that had repriced, so you bought some cheap assets then, and at the same time, as those yields were moved higher and they gradually moved lower as we entered January and February, that's a good opportunity to prune the risk, be selective, and then and then take those Kevin, gains. Is he, is he making a case for active management, at yeah, least he, in bonds? I, I he agree makes, with He him. does make a distinction. Uh, I agree with equities. this premise. I use active managers for uh, credits and for loans and for converts and for perhaps because I haven't found solutions that make me feel good in the ETF market. On the other hand, my portfolios and equities are all ETFs. So we have not had the level of sophistication come into the fixed income market that we found has been developed, particularly in rules-based equity products and ETFs. One thing I will say that I'm pretty negative on, on, on credits and, and the fixed income market, not that on direction, I'm unhappy that over-regulation has made the whole market less liquid. And now I can't buy bonds from money center banks like I used to 15 years ago or even 10 years ago or even seven years ago. I have to go to hedge fund managers and my bid has to be $5 million minimum to get a decent trade. I'm unhappy. The, 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 basically the regulators have over-regulated this market and have forced these these instruments that are important to investors yeah. to go into the shadows. Is, is there, this is an old complaint. Is there really less liquidity in bond, bond trading now? I think you have to have a good footprint in the market. And obviously you have different platforms, traditional liquidity platforms like banks, et cetera. We also have new new platforms like TradeWeb and, uh, and Market Access and things like that that help buy and sell side shops do that. But I think the big point is this, is that the in, in, the, the knowledge that you have to go and access the bond market had typically, historically, been accessing a passive index. And the dialogue has changed pretty drastically over the past few years. And the point that the growth rate that we're seeing in active, actively managed bond funds, and specifically actively managed ETF, is extraordinary. It's 50% year-over-year growth over the past three years. Okay. So.